Nigerian officials blamed the terror attack on St. Francis Catholic Church in Owa, Ondo State, on the Islamic State of West Africa province, ISWAP, while avoiding references to networks of politically powerful herdsmen, Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, reported. Now, according to a senior fellow at the Religious Freedom Institute in Washington, D.C., Stephen Rush, Nigerian Christians have no longer any form of trust in their own government or leaders of the United States and the European Union. On the Owa massacre, Rush said murders are taking place weekly, almost daily in Nigeria. Murders of innocent Christians being gunned down, slaughtered indiscriminately throughout the north and increasingly into the central part of Nigeria and into the south. Well, joining us to discuss this is former director of the State uh, Security Services, Mr. Mike Ajofo. It's good to have you join us, sir. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, this report, obviously, is coming on the heels of the Owa massacre and, of course, the um, refusal by um, security agents to allow the, or to disclose um, the uh, persons who were behind or the suspects that were behind uh, the murders. But let me, let's backtrack a little bit. Um, just looking at this report, uh, especially the fact that someone from outside the country is now speaking not just about our governments, but governments uh, of the United States and Nigeria. Uh, is there any truth to the fact that the people no longer trust government, even security agencies, as for information on how this fight against terrorism is going? Well, I don't think, uh, even though people might have some misgivings in government, for you to say you don't trust government anymore, I don't think uh, it's a right statement to make. People must have trust in government and they're calling their security forces. Like you said, if you, uh, I think it was uh, too quick for some government officials, but again, we should be thinking of where did that statement come from? Did it come from the military or from the police? You see, a lot of uh, people make statements without uh, investigation. It would have been uh, proper if government uh, security agencies were allowed to carry out their functions before making that statement from government that uh, the, 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 the ID swap was responsible for the bombing. Mm. It was too quick for me because uh, uh, we were yet to get to the root of uh, the problem before that thing uh, came up. This is, uh, this is not the first time that we have had conflicting um, information uh, in terms of terrorism. We remember what happened um, under the Goodluck Jonathan government. We had issues with numbers. The media would report this number and then the army would come and counter it. And so it, it also begs the question, where do we get our information from? Because one thing is sure, you're saying we still need a level of trust uh, for our governments to be able to help us to deal with these issues. But then when there are too many conflicting statements and there's uncertainty dangling, um, you know, in the horizons, also coupled with the fact that people still get killed and there's not necessarily a follow through for us to get the right kind of information, especially us, the media, what do we do? You have, uh, as a responsible, responsible media, you have to protect your uh, information. Otherwise, you lose your credibility and integrity. So it's uh, very important that you to stand the information. Like I said, when we started, when did this uh, information I mean, did it come from the defense uh, spokesperson? Did it come from the SSS or from the police? Uh, a politician cannot just uh, come and issue a statement on what he doesn't know about. So I think um, our security, uh, our media, to rely on the source of the information because the person who made that may have no authority to make that statement. You know, like uh, you said, during the good of Jonathan era, you see people, the Minister of Information will make what say, I'm surprised, it's not even talking anymore. The Minister of Information will make statements, the police will make statements. They, they are supposed to have a coordinated uh, approach to issue statements. Now, you see, um, the issue of uh, our massacre, uh, the Amoteko, you see, the, 
they have already set the people behind. Yes. On this stage, they are not aware. So there must be coordination, there must be synergy between all the security agencies before coming out to make a statement. I'm going to go back to that. There are victims in these cases. People who have survived are also there. The families of these victims are also there in the fringes, waiting for something that they can hold on to. Uh, the, the, the villagers have also taken some, you know, laws into their hands, uh, permit me to use that word loosely, uh, by invoking a curse from the gods. Um, Amateko is also trying to be seen to be doing their jobs. The force headquarters has said that they haven't gotten any suspect in their custody. Um, and then you have said that we need to allow for some form of investigation to continue for us to get the right kind of information. That synergy may not necessarily be our place. We, we're supposed to see the synergy work. For example, I'll, make, I'll, I'll paint a picture. There was a, a train incident recently in New York, if not two months ago. We saw the mayor of New York. We saw the governor of New York. We saw the chief of police in New York. Every single person that held an, uh, an office was there at that press conference, and they had one press conference giving the same information. And at the end of the day, they tell us, we're looking into the matter, we'll follow up. And this somewhat gave the people hope something to hold on to. But in Nigeria, the case is different. And sometimes, as media people, you have to keep pushing the police or even the army, security agencies, to get information. There's another school of thought who says, well, go and do your own investigative analysis and get information. But then, here, we wait for the police. So if the police is not giving us information, and then we cannot go and get information also as investigators, where does this leave the people and our fight against terrorism? You see, the, 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 the most, the, like I said, the most the coordination. You remember that during the Gulag Jonathan era, there was this issue of the National Information Center, where we had the representative of uh, all the security agencies and the stakeholders coming to issue a statement, especially on national matters of great importance, like the uh, our incident. That's attracted global attention. So, I expected that people who coming to make statement, it must come from government to at least give people their assurance. What is happening now is that people don't have confidence in government. Like you said, when you started, that people are, are most faith in government. And I said, people may not have confidence in government, in what is going on. Because they want to rely, they want to speak. Like the governor of... Uh, uh, the governor of uh, all those states are sure that they are going to go after these people. And in the Amoteco, for instance, came up with uh, the issue that uh, some of them have been arrested. I'm still at a loss since the Amoteco came out with uh, the arrest. Did they have them over the police? Police say is not aware of such an arrest. So for this gap, for these gaps, for the field, and uh, you know, to not only help the press in reporting, but also to build confidence in government and see how we can, uh, in future, prevent this thing from reporting. So it is very, very important, it's key that uh, such uh, information should be put in the public domain. Let's move away from the communication part of it. Let's look at the, the, the pockets of violence that's been happening. Aside from a war, we've also seen that suspected herdsmen killed people in Enugu, two people in Enugu. Uh, we also saw that um, there, were, there were two people who were killed um, and 22 were kidnapped in Abuja and they were demanding for 12 million uh, naira. And these, these cases continue to uh, spread and it's no longer something that you say, oh, it's happening in the north. It's happening everywhere now. Does this mean that we are not necessarily finding our foot in fighting terrorism. Again, um, how can we say that between 2015 and now, we've been able to, according to the information minister, um, systematically deal with Boko Haram, deal with terrorism, and stem it down to its barest minimum? He said we technically have defeated Boko Haram and, of course, um, other forms of terrorism. But have we, with all of what's happening, we know that when it's close to election, um, you know, campaign season, we see more and more of these attacks. 
But have, can we say that government has really um, been able to deal with this issue? Well, actually, the situation is worrisome. There's no day you wake up, you read in the newspaper, you watch television to hear of a series of attacks, abduction, kidnapping, people paying ransom, and it, it, it's worrisome. And uh, I think uh, people also have to, you know, be alert, be cautious. You know, people, some of these incidents would have ordinarily been prevented if we are conscious of environment and where we are moving. People are driving. They are not looking back. They are not even checking the, 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 the roads where you get to bad spots. What do you do? So we cannot leave everything to, to government, even though it's the social contract. We have surrendered our uh, the, the, the security, our own security to the government. And government, the primary purpose of government is welfare and security of the people. So we, we, if we begin to take laws into our hands to see we are going to protect ourselves, like some of the government, government of the United States, for instance, has suggested that we should arm ourselves, that will lead to our lucky. And uh, what, what I am suggesting is that people must cooperate with government to ensure that the environment is safe by looking at, in case of travels, or your home. Because it has even come to the extent that they go to homes now to kidnap people. So when you are in your home and uh, you are kidnapped, what do you do? It becomes a problem. It's a major security challenge that we are facing. And uh, without sounding pessimistic, I think uh, we are going to have more of it as a... Uh, campaigns and elections are coming up because definitely some of these uh, politicians are also arming the youth and the youth on their own part should be able to say no to this. If you want me to be a talk or follow you, get your children, let them be. We need public enlightenment to at least dissuade these youth from being used by politicians. It's very important. Why do you think that... Um this war against terrorism, the messaging, not just about lip service now, the messaging, whether it be on the media, wherever it is, why do you think that it's not front and center of even the campaign or uh, these politicians? Why is our government not prioritizing it? I know some people will say, well, the government has done its best, but is that best good enough? Why is it not front and center? Like you have just also said, it might be heightened just as the campaign season begins. And you have also said that people are being armed. I'd like to take your mind back to 2014, 2015, 2016, even down to 2021. We've seen many um, guns, ammunitions make their way sometimes as far as into the middle of the city before they're even caught. And those are the ones that we catch and, and you know, take you know, delivery of. But there are so many others that we have not still heard the last of it. We hear about the sensationalism part of it. We, the government, the security agencies say, oh, we're going to you know, um, investigate uh, where it came from, what port it emanated from, and then it dies down. But then we're seeing more and more guns within the country. Um, so we're looking at borders here. Why are these borders still porous? People have campaigned on these porous borders, and they're still the same way. Why are we still dealing with the issue of politicians arming people? I remember a certain governor in the southern state, uh, with guns were found in government house. That matter somewhat has been swept under the carpet. How long can we go on like this if we really want to deal with the issue of terrorism? And we're getting ready for an election. Again, we the people, why are we not pushing for this to be front and center? We are using the wrong approaches to solve this problem. I've said this few times with our number without sounding like a book record. The police, for instance, is too centralized for a control. We need regional outfits, security outfits, or put, put differently, the state police. This is the only way we can go because these people know their environment. If you bring somebody who does not know the environment to be uh, operating in that environment, one, you don't have confidence of the people to volunteer information. The, the cultural difference, cultural deficit, 
and all the all the like. But with the local police or the state police, you can see how effective you know those states these are what has been uh, until this uh, attack you know our Catholic Church. I think the situation was really relatively calm in uh, in all those states because the operatives of Amotepu are indigenous of that place. They can enter the forest, they can but with strangers in the federal police, they will be afraid to go into the bush. They would not like to go. I mean, we have a lot of advantages in the creation of state police. But you know it has to uh, the intervention of the National Assembly before the state police is created. But again, you see, people will tell you that uh, there is a disadvantage that the state governors will abuse it. And I ask, even as we are now, the federal police, is it not being abused? If you so, if you, uh, somebody you go and enforce your, your fundamental right, so with the advantages of the state police, is far far outweighs their disadvantages. So we need to look into the creation of state police, especially now that we're going to election. That is the only way we can move forward in this country. This, I mean, whether it be this government is already on its way out, even though it massively campaigned on the heels of making sure that they fight terrorism, which we haven't seen uh, them do. But will there ever be the willpower to deal with this decisively? And like I mentioned, starting with where these guns are coming from, do we see that willpower anytime soon with, from any leader? And let's not forget, the people who are campaigning for these leaders come from these areas also that have been experiencing some form of uh, insecurity or the other. Um, so again, well, is there the real power on the side of government? And are we the people making them serious enough to take up that job of making sure that we are secure because it is their mandate to make sure that we are protected? You see, the, the flow of uh, illegal arms in Nigeria is massive. And this as a result of our porous borders. And uh, we cannot continue to cry over steel men. We also need to liberalize carrying of firearms because the over 500 uh, million in West Africa subregion, about okay. 70 percent of them are in Nigeria, and uh, you begin to wonder how. And that free access to arms, especially from the Boko Haram, the ISWAP, there's so much arms, and that they freely they, they don't have rules of engagement. And that makes it very difficult for our military to also engage them because uh, they have rules of engagement. These people operate anyhow, no rules of engagement, no, they don't have any rules guiding them. So they just operate, shoot at people. You can imagine, train attack. They have been visited several institutions, uh, even military institutions, killing soldiers and others. They just want to make government unpopular and undermine the people's government, uh, uh, confidence in government. Mm. And that's their aim. Because I, we cannot exactly say this is what they are looking for. Mm. It, it's quite different from what we have in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, the, the south, south, uh, southwest region where you have uh, people demanding for Republic of uh, Dudua or the southeast where you have to ask them for Republic of Biafra. We must need to come. We must come together to survey this country. The country belongs to all of us. Nobody is more Nigerian than any other person. So we need to work together to make Nigeria great. Well, no better way to end the conversation. Micah Joffo is the former director of the DSS, and we appreciate your thoughts and thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight, but I leave you with some of the highlights of the show this week. I hope you enjoyed. We'll be back on Monday, 7 p.m., talking on the big political stories across the country and on the continent. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good night. that
He wasn't good enough to be able to be your guide. That's point one. The second point is, for example, I've, I've taken time to listen to my colleague, my brother that is talking on the other side. I don't know him. But for you to say that the comments that are being made is by political jobbers. That means that I'm a political, that means that I'm a political jobber. It's an unfortunate statement. I'd like to let you know, just like you stated, if you compose a, co a committee, 17 month panel, to come up with a decision, and of course, as a member of the PDP, I'm aware that a vice, a presidential candidate cannot in last time take a decision. And that was why he proposed and submitted himself that, choose me, choose me, a vice presidential candidate. And this at the end of the day, 14 out of 17, give the treat to say that wicked should be. Even if you purpose to take a contrary opinion, prior to that particular time, what should you have done? You should, just like uh, uh, the governor of uh, Bengal State had stated, at least held this man in high esteem. Single-handedly, Wiki held this party from 2014. In terms of financial capacity, in terms of, look at what happened in the 2019 uh, PDD convention. The, the, the current presidential candidate is just coming in, coming from another party. Of course, we are not against that. But if you want to do something, let there be equity. So everybody who is saying that, and you know, what makes uh, this most embarrassing is when Atiku was going to make the public statement, I wish that he hadn't made that statement that he made, that he chose Okowa on the basis of the fact that he had looked and he had a presidential, a future presidential capacity. Also, the other two candidates lack that uh, ability. It's most unfortunate. Uh, it is so painful. And whatever decision that, whatever decision my governor will take today, the rest are short. Number one, we'll stand behind him, we'll stand by him, and it is definitely going to affect the fortunes of PDP, if not in the north, at least in the south. Those who are saying, does a man, does one man make a, make, make, make a forest? You will see examples of that area. You can see that, of course, at the moment now there is already cross capital and whatsoever. Uh, I, do not I, need Mr. Tamana, Mr. Tamana, are, are you insinuating yes. that Governor Wike may leave the party? Because he succinctly said to us, and I remember, no. that he was never going to leave the party. He would stand by his party. But this statement you just made has some patches on it that seems that, like, the governor I, is about to I, make a move of sorts. Do you have a, an information? My, my dear lady... I am not Governor Wiki, but one thing that is uh, what, uh, the constant in life is a uh, change. Hmm. Governor Wiki could have made a statement to say he's not going to move. But of course, look at the um, escalating circumstances. Look at the, look at, listen to the comment of uh, the Niger, former Niger State Governor. I mean, you see, of course, no matter what, uh, how much we try to build the house, if at a particular point in time you discover that you are not wanted in a particular place. You've got to wear the options and whatsoever. I know that my governor is very, is an astute thinker. And when he takes a decision, it's definitely going to be a right decision. So for now, he hasn't taken that decision. For now, he hasn't said anything. But when eventually he, he does, and in the event that he takes the decision to, to step out of the party, definitely you can be sure that as many of us, that are with him will definitely still stand by him. Matter how popular uh, uh, Atiku is, he cannot win election alone. Okay. No matter how strong a general is, he will never want to lose any of his lieutenants. And lastly, so I will still continue to say that Alaji Atiku Abubakar should, as a matter of urgency, set up a high power delegation. To go and have a serious discussion okay. with uh, 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 yes of Wiki. Why anybody in the leadership of PDP would want to grace 
Former President Onushe Ambassador, with the honor he does not deserve. They will be committing political hierarchy in this political suicide if they want to engage with Olusha Gwambasojo on anything that we give that we give him relevance, especially for the mischief that he has set out to do. They should just leave him on his own and let him do whatever he likes because at some point at some point the public will see him in as a nuisance that is just there but if they want to engage him as they have threatened to do they will be the worst for him there are, there, are, there are those who there are those who would would be very not so much that i love them not so much that i'm a member of the party but it would be a strategic pr error to engage or back Obasanjo in any form of embroglio especially on remarks and opinions that he has codified in his book I wonder why they want to engage in this uh, in this rough, rough fight. There are the